First of all, guys, let's cover the two most important BIOS tweaks, which are going to help you out so much with getting way lower system latency. First of all, let's talk about Intel C state support or AMD C state control. I'm going to explain this like this. There are multiple C states on your CPU, zero, one, and two, in which the CPU is either fully active partially in idle, which is basically a power savings mode, or in sleep status, where it's like on ultra power saving mode. And the problem is, especially on the ultra power saving mode, it needs very long to be fully active again. So why is C-state support so bad? First of all, it gives you additional wake up latency. As I just mentioned, if you're maybe in a power savings mode and you need more CPU power, it's gonna need some time until the CPU is again fully active. Interrupt handling issues, because of course, if your CPU is partially even in idle, it won't handle interrupts as good. And of course, also the twin transition between C states can cause additional latency as well. So why you want to disable it? Of course, reduce wake up latency, more consistent performance without variables through different CPU states and more stability overall. How do you find this? Make sure that you put your BIOS first of all into advanced mode guys. If you have it on the simple one, which most BIOSes have, you won't find it. You have to put it into advanced and then you should see something like advanced CPU settings. You can see where I found it guys and then just simply scroll all the way down this list until you can find C state support. Make sure that it's disabled, but then afterwards guys, keep in mind, temperatures might be a little bit higher now on your CPU because the consumption is higher. So therefore, if temperatures are an issue for your PC, you should keep an eye out for that. Next up, we also have Intel SpeedShift technology or AMD Cool and Quiet. They both basically do the same thing. They control core speeds on the needed power which the PC needs at the moment. But the problem is core speed fluctuation can cause additional latency. So you actually want to disable it. The CPU will not only run at its maximum clock speed without downclocking, but you're also ensuring more consistent performance. So therefore disable both of these as well. You find them in the completely same menu. For me, it was like the fourth or fifth option, I think, from the top. And there, I also just made sure to disable it. Next up, guys, also super important, your XMP profile. Many people are missing out on 20 to 25% of RAM speed performance when you don't use the best XMP profile. Even though it's just nanoseconds, your cast latency is a lot higher, which you don't want for games. So make sure to Google your RAM specifically, do some research. Most of the time, there's even some core data on the right side, exactly telling you which RAM model you have, what brand it is from, so that you can select the right mode. Just simply make sure to Google your exact RAM and Google Google like what's the best XMP profile for it and most of the time you will already find some info about it and your RAM is just simply gonna run way more stable you're gonna have the least amount of cast latency and also bandwidth bandwidth is not as important for gaming it's more for like video editing and all of that stuff but I see so many people who have as an example like 3000 megahertz RAM and it's only running at 2400 they're missing out on like 20 to 25 percent of their RAM performance just because they're too lazy to set it up properly and especially pre-built PCs have that problem guys so therefore check that once you disable both of these settings and set up the right XMP profile. These are already some of the core steps to actually tweak your BIOS and get the best performance out of your CPU and PC. First of all, please go in your task manager under startup and make sure to disable as many programs as you can guys. Everything which you don't need whenever your PC is launching, fully disable it. And now I'm about to show you how we can actually reduce the amount of processes under our CPU with disabling services on our Windows PC. What we're going to need for this is the link in the video description where you can find the ultimate Windows utility from Chris Titus. Just simply click here and copy this comment, go into your Windows search bar, type in that PowerShell until you can find Windows PowerShell, right click onto it and run it as administrator. Once it's running, you're gonna paste in the following comment. You don't have to download anything guys, the tool is gonna work here automatically through the PowerShell. Sometimes it requires extra permission, so you have to type in here Y for yes. But besides that, this is how the tool looks like. And we wanna go over to tweaks and then you can see desktop, laptop and minimal. All of these have completely different settings guys, but since you're on desktop PC, most likely you're gonna select desktop. Always create a restore point guys. Before you play any any sort of tweaks, make sure this one is checked. The next up we also have customize O and O shut up tweaks, which is really handy in this tool already, since it basically disables all of the privacy settings which allow Microsoft to collect data of your PC. So this is already built into this tool. With run O and O shut up and the small check here, it's going to disable all of these as well additionally. And all you gotta do is click under run tweaks. Once it's done with everything guys, you just simply have to close it and restart your PC and check again the next time for your processes. So in this next step now guys, we're going to go into our Windows search bar and there we have services. Right click, run it as administrator guys, and in here now is a list with all of these services which you can fully disable on your Windows PC. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, so therefore make sure to copy everything. Remember, before you apply any sort of tweaks on the internet, always create a restore point in the mid steps.
The Xbox app you maybe might need if you're trying to play Minecraft on your PC. I actually personally had this issue. Of course, all of these Xbox services are super hardware demanding. So if you only play games like Counter-Strike, Valorant, Fortnite, and you don't need any sort of Microsoft services, make sure to disable these as well. Then some pretty basic stuff guys, under installed applications, just simply go through this whole entire list and make sure to uninstall everything which you don't need on your PC. Something like Quick Assist as an example here. For me personally, everything which I don't utilize is already uninstalled, so therefore, yeah. I'm already chilling here. Then once again, you can go back and quickly check here under startup if everything is disabled, which you usually don't need. For me, it's only my GoXLR and audio basically. The rest is fully deactivated. Also another quick thing guys, is adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. This one is pretty basic and pretty known. You can just simply put it under just for best performance if you're really struggling on your PC. For me, I kind of have a custom version here now where I show thumbnails instead of icons, show translucent selection, show Windows content while dragging, smooth edges on screen fonts and use drop shadows. Of course, this one here is pretty hardware demanding, but yeah, I kind of like how my PC looks like this. Then we're going to continue now here with under advanced and then virtual memory, guys. This one is also really important. Make sure to uncheck automatically manage paging file size for all drives. And then you can see custom size. And once we're now in here, guys, we have first of all initial size in Embed and maximum size in Embed. What you want to do, go into the task manager, go into performance, click under your memory. For me, you can see that I'm currently running actually 48 gigs of RAM. So what you want to do is bring out your calculator app, Type in there 48 times 1024, since one gig of RAM is actually 1024 Mbit. And then you can see guys, it's 49,152. So therefore for initial size, 49,152. If as an example, you have eight gigs of RAM, you take eight times 1024, and then you have 8,192. And now for the maximum size, the only thing which you have to do is take your total system memory RAM and double it times two. So for me, it would be 98,000. 304. I'm just going to put it in here and then I already set it up properly. Click under set. This is especially really good if you're on a PC with maybe a lower amount of RAM, something like four to eight gigs of RAM. This is going to work perfectly fine because on virtual memory, your PC can kind of dump off files when the main memory is overwhelmed. Or better said, when you use very RAM hungry applications on your PC. Just let me click under OK. You can see now that we actually have to reset our PC in order to change this. So therefore, just let me do this here real quick. So guys, for this next step, we're going to need a tool which is called Hardware Info. You can get it as well from the link in the video description. Just simply go through the installation process here real quick. Go next, accept and install. I already have it on my PC, so I just launched it here. Click under start, let it real quick analyze your whole entire system, guys. And this tweak is super important if you want to go for super low input delay with your mouse and keyboard. You can see now in this tool, we can basically see everything what is going on on our PC. Click under buzz go into PCI bus and now guys there are two different versions one of them is for AMD one is for Intel first of all what you got to do is open up all of these small arrows here and make sure that you find all of the USB controllers which are available on your motherboard for me it's right now here the AMD B550 chipset USB controller but for AMD actually guys you don't want to use the motherboard one you want to use the one which is called exactly as your CPU generation you can see it's most of the time like a weird name since I'm running here Ryzen 7 5800X on this PC where I'll show you this right now and then underneath we have the USB root hub. This is the main USB root hub and this is exactly where here under port 1 and 2 and this is now exactly where here under port 1 and 2 I want to have my mouse and keyboard plugged in. As you can see my Razer mouse is already plugged in here. Since I record this here right now real quick on the AMD PC guys I haven't plugged in my keyboard in the right one. I just want to showcase you port 1 and 2 are theoretically the ones and this you can only figure out through trying out different USB ports on the backside of your PC. As mentioned under AMD it is the USB controller which is called exactly as your CPU generation and then the main USB root hub there you want to put in exactly on mouse and keyboard. On Intel, it's way easier, guys. That's just simply called Intel USB controller. And there you have directly the first USB root hub, and there you get to plug it in. The next up, guys, what I want to show you is usually if you check your task manager, you're probably going to have a bunch of NVIDIA applications here running in the background. For me personally, that's not the case because I actually manually deploaded my NVIDIA driver. There's so many unnecessary tools which usually get installed through GeForce Experience or the NVIDIA app, like AI Voice, Shadow Play for recordings, and all of that stuff. I anyways use OBS, so I don't really care about it. There are so many unnecessary tools which get installed with. All we need, guys, is a tool called NVIDIA clean style. The link to it is as well in the video description. This is how the tool looks then. We're just simply going to open it up, go here under yes. And then you can see we basically can select you now from a manual list of all of the drivers which are available. Let's say we want to go for the latest one. Just simply make sure that it says DCH behind it guys. That means that it's basically ready to go. Then we're going to go under next. And then you can see only display drivers is actually checked. Even under recommended, we only have physics X and HD audio via HDMI, which I personally don't need since I don't plug my PC on a TV or maybe a monitor with speakers. 
and all of this stuff here, virtual audio, telemetry, shadow play, GeForce experience, shield streaming service, never use this in my life. Waste is getting pre-installed on Nvidia. They're just trying to give you all of their services to maybe bring you to maybe buy some stuff or whatever. So therefore only make sure these two are actually checked and click on the next. And now you just simply want to follow all of my settings. Disable install telemetry and advertising, perform clean installation, very important if you have a previous driver already pre-installed. So therefore don't be worried. No, you don't have to uninstall it previously manually, disable multiplane overlay, disable Ansel, show expert tweaks, disable driver telemetry, disable Nvidia HD audio, again don't need it, enable the MSI mode guys, this is the same like MSI utility mode v3, just simply make sure to put it under high as well. This is basically improving the communication time between your CPU and GPU, resulting in way better performance while gaming. Then disable this mode here as well, this one is super old guys from literally like the early 2000s, it basically was to prevent you from creating copies of movies or some stuff like that, and next up we're gonna click under next. Wait just simply a few seconds for it to get finished here. And now all you got to do is click and install. And then all you got to do is go through the normal installation process. Just simply click on the next, next and all of that stuff, guys. And you're going to have a fully debloated driver. But don't be worried. You can still access all of these settings because the NVIDIA control panel is still pre-installed. And of course, guys, the most important part is as well your ping. This is why you see FNCS winners like Mero, Asian Jeff, and many more pros use Gear Up Booster. The best part is with my link in the description, you can actually try it out for absolutely free, guys. Geo Booster is going to look for the best DNS server in your near, always making sure that you have the lowest and most stable ping. Even if you already have really good ping guys, it's still worth it because it's going to make it way more consistent. The Geo Booster is going to actively in the background search for the best DNS servers, always making sure that you have the best connection to Fortnite. As mentioned, check it out for absolutely free with the link in the description guys. Next up guys, we're going to utilize the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, link to it as well in the video description. Just simply type in exactly the game you want to optimize it for, or you can keep it as well on a global profile. And first of all, let's take a look at sync and refresh guys here it's super important that we basically disable any sort of sync technology if you don't utilize it something like g-sync on off disallow force off 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 vertical sync as well on force off guys this really only makes sense if you are maybe on 60 75 hertz monitors besides that force it off next up guys we're going to take a look at maximum pre-rendered frames and here it's super important actually for me that i keep it on one and here i'm going to give you an example if you have your pre-rendered frames capped to one this is going to result in less cues of your cpu basically as asking your GPU for the next frame, which can result in lower input delay. On the other hand, this will decrease your performance a little bit. Your frames are gonna go down. If you have any modern system as of right now, let's say like a pretty decent Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, and a decent gaming GPU, this should not be an issue. Especially in fast paced games, guys, this is making a huge difference. And for me personally, it's worth it to trade off a little bit of my smoothness for very low input delay. But if your CPU is bottlenecking for whatever reason, or your PC isn't the fastest, just simply keep it and use 3D application setting. Then prefer refresh rate I have as well here on highest available of course. Next up under anti-aliasing guys, anti-aliasing FXAA enabled you're gonna keep on off. I'm gonna put both of them actually on off because they can introduce blurriness which we actually don't want guys. We want to have just simply sharp edges since both of these modes here actually can introduce blurriness so therefore I have them turned off. Gamma correction I leave on on, this is basically just brightness settings. The same as well with line gamma which is gonna most likely gonna get the default gamma setting of your Windows PC. Next up transparency multi-sampling and super sampling you want to have actually put on disabled as well for the best performance guys we don't want any filters to go over a game to maybe make the visuals a little bit better especially super sampling can really help you with visuals they could maybe figure out like a sweet spot for you something like four times or two times i would say so that you have pretty good visuals but still like not the most demanding one for your performance but for me i just simply play comp so i keep it on off now the msaa mode you're gonna leave on application control because most of the time the in-game settings of the game which you actually play are the best so therefore if you want to utilize any of these modes just simply set them up in the game you specifically play. With that said, you can copy all of my settings here. So next up guys, under texture filtering, anti traffic filter optimization you actually want to keep on. This is a way more hardware friendly way of basically making images sharper than having it on off, so therefore you want to enable it. And sample optimization is going to make sure that this mode is going to be even lower quality, or better said, even more hardware friendly. So therefore you want to have both of these enabled. It's basically making sure to reduce the quality of this mode even further, resulting in even better performance. So both of these should be turned on. Once we got that, leave your antistrophic filtering mode on application controlled. You want to set it up in the game itself. Then prevent antistrophic filtering you want to keep on off. LOD bias you want to keep on allow. Texture filtering quality on of course high performance guys. This is gonna of course again decrease the image quality but give us way better
better performance and on top of that texture filtering Trulina optimization you want to keep on on as well because Trulina optimization is again going to support the downscaling of images resulting in even better performance. So this one again goes in hand with this one here. So you want to have both of them enabled or basically this one high performance and this one turned on. Then you're just simply going to apply these changes, close the tool and play the game which you want to play and enjoy having way better performance. If this whole guide was helpful guys, I would highly appreciate this sub and make sure to check out the video right now on screen where I show you how to fully optimize your network adapter for way lower ping and also how you can use a custom gaming OS like Atlas OS in order to reduce your processes and make your windows a lot snappier.